Hello guys, in this tutorial we will learn how to do sampling in MATLAB. So first of all we will create an M file with name sampling. We can do this by using edit command. So you can see that sampling M file is created. Let's say you are given a sinusoidal signal with amplitude 1, frequency 2 and phase shift 0. So first thing we have to define the signal in MATLAB. The signal exists from the time duration 0 to 1. Take step size 0.001 to make this signal look smooth. The small step size will allow us to consider as much points as possible and as these points will be very close to each other so a smooth graph appears when the plot command connects them. So dt is equal to 0.001. t is equal to 0 colon dt colon 1 now let's define the signal a multiplied with sine 2 pi f t plus theta we will use the command subplot as we have to show three plots in the single figure. Now let's take a look at the syntax of a subplot command. It is quite simple. First element represents the row, second is for column and third entry specifies the figure followed by the row and column. Proper labels and titles will be given to the plot. So let's code this. Subplot three rows, one column and first entry. Then we will use the plot command here t comma x of a. X label time in seconds. Y label x of a and the title of the plot is analog continuous time signal I have increased the line width with 0.5. Now let's look at this analog signal. So you can see that this analog signal is continuous in time. In order to sample this signal, we have to follow the Nyquist criteria. According to the Nyquist criteria, sampling frequency should be two times greater than or equal to the maximum frequency present in the signal. If we don't follow the Nyquist criteria, we cannot reconstruct the original signal from the sampled version. Sampling means we will discretize the x-axis. So defining the sampling frequency that is taken as six times more than the signal frequency. That is f of s is equal to 6 times of f. Inverse of sampling frequency is equal to the sampling time taking n is equal to f s. And after that we will create discrete axis. For discrete axis we have to replace t with nts. And 
that is n is equal to 0 with increment of t s that is sampling time and it will lost at n t s. Now the sample signal will be a multiplied with sine of 2 pi t 2 pi f into n 1 plus theta. Now again we are going to create subplot but this time we will use the stem command to show the sample signal. Remember that in order to show the discrete signal we have to use stem command and don't forget to mention the labels and titles subplot 3 rows 1 column and second entry. Next we have to use stem command. in n1 comma x of s that is sample version and x label is equal to samples y label x of s it represents sample version and title discrete time signal. I am again increasing the line width with 0.5. Now if we want to reconstruct the signal we have to first reconstruct the time vector and after that we will reconstruct the continuous signal from the sampled values. So before reconstructing first see the sampled signal. So it is giving error here let's correct it and then run it again. So you can see the sample signal here and we have followed Nyquist criteria because Nyquist criteria states that the sampling frequency should be two times the maximum frequency present in the signal but we have taken six times that is greater than two. So we are following the Nyquist criteria. So according to that our reconstructed signal should match with the analog signal that is the given signal. So now first we have to reconstruct the time vector that is t1 is equal to linearly spaced 0 comma maximum of n1 comma maximum of n1 divided by dt here n1 is the discrete time vector and line, line space command is used to create the linearly spaced vector from 0 to maximum n dash 1 now we will use interpolation command and spline method to reconstruct the signal as shown in the command below that is x of r interpolation 1 this is discrete axis n of 1 this is sample signal and then the reconstructed time vector and then we have to mention the method that we want to use that is subline now using subplot command again to show the plots that is 3 row 1 column and 3rd entry. 
do not forget to mention the labels and titles. Lot T one X of R that is the reconstructed signal X label is time in seconds Y label is reconstructed signal and title is reconstructed signal I am again changing the line width with 0.5 Let's run the code. So you can see here that analog signal and the reconstructed signals are similar because we have followed the Nyquist criteria here. So let's say if we don't follow the Nyquist criteria, what will happen? Take sampling frequency 1.5 times of the given frequency. Now if we run this code and see the output, you can see that analog signal is not reconstructed. It is different signal. The reconstructed signal does not match with the analog signal. So the key thing in sampling is we have to Nyquist criteria, we have to follow the Nyquist criteria. So that is it, that is it from my side. See you in the next video.